Good morning Year 5, I hope you had a good weekend um, and that you're ready for some new arithmetic this week. So we're looking at the word equivalence when we're looking at fractions during these questions this week and hopefully you've heard of the word equivalence before. Now I've underlined this part of it here because there is a word that we use a lot when we're calculating um, which has the same three letters at the beginning um, and it is a key to understanding what this term means. It sounds like quite a complicated word, but actually, if we're thinking about the word equals, that is at the heart of it. So the word equivalence means um, being equal to or worth the same value. So we're going to look at fractions, okay, that are expressed in different ways. So they're using different numbers, but they are worth the same amount. So I'll show you what I mean by looking at um, some diagrams. So this is a rectangle, okay, and we're thinking about how much of this rectangle is shaded. So hopefully you will agree with me that half of the rectangle is shaded, one part out of the total of two equal parts. Okay, so we're going to look at equivalent fractions for a half. So this means fractions that are going to have different numbers, but there's still only going to be half of it that is shaded. So if we look here, and if you can see and compare, it's still a half of this shape shaded. Okay, but actually for this, we've got two equal parts out of four because our fraction is divided into quarters, into four equal parts. So to have a half, we need two out of the four to be shaded in. But I hope you can see that both um, shapes, the same amount of shaded is shaded in. So it's still a half because two quarters is the same as a half. It's always, I think, um, worth thinking about chocolate bars and things like that. So if, if somebody said to you, oh, you could eat half of that, um, of that chocolate bar or you could eat two quarters, they're actually saying you could eat the same amount, but they're just expressing it in different ways. So we could look again here. We've got the same amount shaded. OK, so you can see here. Um, but this time we've got one, two, three, four part shaded out, out of a total of eight. And hopefully you can see the relationship between these numbers. So each time we're looking at we're doubling. Okay, so the numerator, the top number is doubling each time. And the same is happening with the denominator, which is going to be really important when we look at working out equivalent fractions. Okay, so the same thing is happening to the top and the bottom number each time to so the numerator and the denominator. So we're thinking now about half again, and can you come up with any other um, fractions that are equivalent to, so they're equal to, they're the same as a half. So I'm gonna start off with 10 over, what would I put as my denominator if my numerator was, um, was 10? What would my denominator have to be? Yep, hopefully you've agreed with me, it's 20. Okay, so 10 out of 20, if I ate 10 out of 20 sweets, I would have eaten half, okay. And carry on. What about if I had a if I'd eaten a hundred sweets? Okay, what would my denominator be? If I was only able to eat half of them, what would be the total? So if I'd eaten a hundred out of two hundred, I would have eaten a half. Okay, so those are three equivalent fractions that are equal to the same amount. And what it is is it's breaking up a whole into smaller parts. So here we can't make a half, we can't make this fraction any smaller. However, we look at this. If we go back to here, we're using the same space, but we're breaking up into um, smaller but equal parts. Okay, so I could, if I'm doubling it again, I would have had eight over 16 and so on. So what we need to be doing is thinking about the questions this week. So it'll be something like this. Now, what you need to start thinking about is that message I gave you on the last page, which is to make sure that your fraction that you're coming up with or your answer is equivalent, you must make sure that you're doing the same to the bottom number as you are to the top number. So remember, we've got numerator and denominator. So I'm thinking with a half, it's quite easy because we know that there's a relationship between this number is half of that number or that number is double that number okay but i'm going to show you because the ones you're working with this week are slightly more complicated than a half i'm thinking what am i multiplying two by to get to 10. so two times what makes 10 well, i'm times in by five so i need to make sure with my numerator i'm going to do exactly the same i'm going to times by five so one times by five is five and when you look at it you can see that it is equivalent to a half. If I ate five sweets out of a bag of 10 sweets, I would have eaten half. But it's a really good sort of message to give you to think about what is the relationship between the numbers that were being given. So if I go back over here, what do I have to do to two to get to 22? What am I multiplying it by? 
Okay, so I'm multiplying it by 11. And each time I'm going back to that original fraction here. Okay, so I've got to do the same to the top number in the numerator. Okay, so I've times by 11, so I've got to times this number by 11. So 1 times 11 is 11. Again, you can see that that is an equivalent to a half because half of 22 is 11. Okay, and then the very last one we'll have a look at is we're looking at what am I doing to 2 to get to 12. Okay, so 2 multiplied by what equals 12? Hopefully you're shouting at me and saying 2 times 6, or 2 multiplied by 6. So I must do the same. I must multiply by 6. Okay, so 1 times by 6 is 6. Now that is a really simple explanation there of how you can work out equivalent fractions. And it's all to do with recognising the relationship, okay, between the number in your original fraction and the other numbers that you're being given. Okay, so you're thinking about, okay, I'm looking for the numerators in these questions, but I've been given the denominators and I can start to look at what that pattern is. So 2 times by 5 was 10, so I had to times that by 5. 2 times by 11 was 22, so I had to times 1 by 11. That way, if I'm doing the same to the top number as the bottom number, I'm going to make sure I've got an equivalent fraction. Okay, if I times 1 by 5 and the, net, and the top 1 by 7, it wouldn't be equivalent anymore. There wouldn't be that same relationship. Okay, so have a go at it, and then tomorrow um, there will be a similar question. Um, so it will give you a chance to practice it, and then we'll make it a little bit more challenging as we go through the week. But if you watch the answer video, there'll be another explanation with today's questions. If you're not quite sure, it's really good to sort of sit and watch it again. But good luck.